What's up you guys Aditi, welcome back to our channel. We have seen three kind of learning on this channel. One was classical conditioning, operant conditioning and uh, cognitive learning theory. So today we are going to look at the fourth and I think the last kind of learning which is observational learning. Let's go. As the name suggests, observational learning, we tend to learn the behavior after watching or observing somebody else do that behavior and observational learning is very useful very very important for animals uh, for humans and animals so it's useful because we can just learn behavior without actually engaging in anything that's kind of like a risky behavior so to give you an example um, let's take monkeys monkeys that see other monkeys respond with fear to the sight of snakes they also learn to be afraid of snakes even when they have never met a snake in their life because they have been brought up in a laboratory setting so that's what observational learning is and bandura has explained has shown us this observational kind of learning to us in this amazing bobo doll experiment so let's check that out Bobo doll experiment involves preschool children. They are in a room where a person, we're just going to call him model, he is interacting with the toys that are there in the room. These children are divided into two groups. The first group of children see or observe this model play with the dolls while, while he's ignoring the Bobo doll. Now, Bobo doll is this punching doll that we have, which hawa bharte and then the kid actually punches it or pushes it or whatever and it just comes back up. It's basically it's that, that's Bobo doll. Whereas the second group of children observe or see this model behave very violently, very aggressively with the Bobo doll. Like he's punching it, he's hitting it, he's picking it up and he's throwing it on the floor. It's hitting him with the hammer, very aggressive behavior for children to see. Now, both these children or both these groups are put in one room where there are a lot of toys to play with. The first group of children that did not see any kind of aggressive behavior, they are nicely playing with all the other toys and totally ignoring the Bobo doll like the model had behaved. Whereas the second group of children behave exactly the way the model did when they had observed it. So they were hitting the doll, they were punching the doll, they were putting, pick, picking him up and throwing him on the floor, hitting it with the hammer, you know, all of that. So if you have watched this video, uh, you would know that reinforcement is something that increases the likelihood of a behavior happening. So in Bobo doll experiment, we learn that for a behavior to happen, there is no reinforcement necessary. They just learned that behavior by just watching somebody else do it. Bandura also had a second experiment done where different children were in a room and they were shown a film of a model doing this exact same behavior we spoke about, you know, hitting the doll, punching the doll, etc. etc. But again, these children were divided into two groups. The first group of children see that this model was awarded thereafter. Whereas the second group of children see that he was punished thereafter. Again, after they had seen the film, they put both of these groups in a room and they are allowed to interact with the toys again. The first group behave aggressively with Bobo doll and all the other toys. Whereas the second group of children don't. And I think you understand what I'm trying to say here. I don't have to actually explain it and I don't have to elaborate it. But it's like when you see someone being awarded for that behavior, you also want to behave that way. Whereas you see when somebody else is punished, you know that oh, it's a bad thing that he did and we shouldn't do it. But, but here is a trick thing. Bandura asked the second group of children to show him what the model did and if they did show him then Bandura will reward them and the second group of children did show him what he did. So that shows that both the groups had learned aggressive behavior 
but the first group was the only group that successfully imitated the behavior and they did that without any prompting there are four elements to observational learning first is attention you have to pay attention to what somebody else is doing to imitate that behavior second is memory now you have paid attention you have to retain it in your memory so you can imitate that behavior third is imitation itself you have paid attention you have written it in the memory but you are not capable of imitating that behavior then how would you do it so let me give an example you have seen someone dance very gracefully they are doing contemporary or ballet or something and you have never done that kind of dance before your muscles are not trained to do such kind of dance then it will be very hard for you to imitate it and the last and the fourth element is motivation you need to desire you need to want to do that behavior so those are the four elements of observational learning i hope you learned what observational learning is from this video don't forget to check out the other three videos i've made on learning also please give this video a big thumbs up comment down below what other videos i may do and subscribe to this channel join the community and I'll see you next Friday on the Psychology Week.